Hello, and welcome back to my channel, and also welcome to my new series, Gods and Goddesses. So, um, this is a series I've been wanting to make, as some of you may know from my earlier videos, uh, for quite some time. Uh, this is a series that is going to be dedicated to a wide variety of pagan deities of uh, various pantheons, of uh, various regions of the world. Uh, but, you know, as I felt suitable, uh, as I felt was suitable, I should say, um, this is a video dedicated to a deity that I am currently working rather closely with. I mean, as you, some of you may know, I am currently being initiated into the rune Lagus, which is the rune of water. Um, so, Njord, uh, the aquatic deity that we as human beings are probably uh, most familiar with, uh, those of us at least who work in the Germanic Norse tradition, uh, which is me among other people, um, would have had most uh, intimate contact with Njord in uh, that sense, in working to understand the elements of water, in working to understand all the attributes and traits with it. So um, I figured it was a, a suitable tribute to the deity Njord um, to make this video in his honor, uh, to uh, you know inform you guys on who exactly he is, for those of you that don't know, or for those of you that would like to know more about him, uh, who he is, what he stands for, uh, what he can do for the magician, shaman, uh, whatever you call yourself. Um, and yeah, so I suggest that we get started. Um, expect to see more videos on uh, a variety of deities, like I said, in this series, uh, both from my own personal pantheon that I work in, the Germanic slash Norse pantheon, but also, as mentioned, uh, from other pantheons, such as the, you know, the Egyptians, uh, the Greeks, uh, even Eastern pantheons, African pantheons, native pantheons from the Native Americans, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, um, I am also open to requests if you really want to, you know, have a video done on a particular deity and uh, that deity calls to me in some way, shape or form, or it's a deity that I have worked with, uh, that I uh, happen to have a good connection with, or that I would like to, you know, um, know more about perhaps myself, um, then feel free to, you know, leave requests, feel free to, uh, you know, put in uh, a request for such a thing like that. But, um, yeah, let's get started on the video. So today we are talking about Njord, the god of the sea, or at least one of the gods of the sea in the Germanic tradition. Uh, by the way, I'm just going to refer to it as the Germanic tradition because N Norse is technically a sub-branch of the Germanic tribes, of the Germanic peoples, uh, not a separate individual thing. So Germanic is the, you know, uh, umbrella term that we would use for... Um, the people found in uh, central, northwestern, and northern Europe. So, <clears throat> let's begin. Njord, the uh, Germanic Norse god, uh, the Vanir, because he is a fertility god. He is of the tribe of Vanir, not of the Aesir, even though he lives among the Aesir, but more on that later. Uh, he is a um, relatively well-known, popular deity, even today I have found, at least from my you know, uh, research online, a, a lot of no, a lot is actually known about him. Uh, he's um, uh, well known among modern pagans, is my understanding, actually. But for those of you who don't know him, uh, who may not uh, necessarily work in our tradition as much as uh, you perhaps would like, uh, perhaps you haven't come around to it, or perhaps you, uh, you know, just somehow haven't heard of Njord, um, this video is probably going to be for you. So he is, um, to most people who do know about him, known as a god of the sea. He is uh, also, of course, the father of Frey and Freya, or Ingvi Frey, I, uh, he's also known as. Um, so um, this it is quite fitting that he is also a fertility god, being the uh, father of the two fertility gods that are probably uh, most well known in a sexual sense. Uh, Ingvi Frey or Frey is of course the uh, masculine aspect and principle, also called the Lord of the Land, Lord of the Bounty, uh, Lord of the Earth, uh, stuff like that. Uh, Freya is of course more about uh, the feminine side of things and also uh, deals more specifically with romance and sex and stuff like that. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Njord is also, of course, in his own right, a fertility deity in the sense that uh, water, of course, nurtures uh, plants and other things. 
um, that grow, that we profit from, that, that we live off of. And of course, back in the day, in, during the Viking Age, but even in the preceding ages in the uh, you know uh, regions where the Germanic tribes resided, uh, especially where I'm from, uh, the Netherlands, modern day, uh, the Netherlands, modern day Holland, uh, we still have a lot to do with, uh, you know, the sea. And I mean, we are a very... Uh, you know, seafaring people historically, the Dutch. Um, so for all these tribes that resided in that area, um, the sea was a very important source of income, of livelihood, uh, whether that was through fishing, through trade, or through other, um, you know, crafts that somehow in some way, shape, or form relied on water. Um, so Njord is a very um, important deity historically. He was very well liked, very well known, uh, very widely worshipped as well. Um, and Njord was at one point uh, said to have a wife or consort. It wasn't exactly clear to me if it was specifically a wife, like a marriage arrangement. Um, but with the goddess Nerfus. Now Nerfus, I have discussed her before. I believe it was in the video on Burkano uh, that I have discussed her before. Uh, she is a uh, very much a earth deity, almost like our version of Gaia, if you will, or Mother Earth. Um, now, one very important uh, and interesting thing that you may want to know about is that um, the sacrifices, human sacrifices specifically to Nerfus back in the day, uh, Nerfus was uh, said to be carted around to, you know, like um, observe the land and be shown uh, areas, uh, much like a lot of other deities were said to, uh, you know, uh, have been treated. I mean, for example, I know that uh, apparently uh, Marduk, the uh, Babylonian head deity for a while, uh, was said to have his statue carved around through his uh, through his cities in in, in Babylon or a city, uh, and then he was uh, you know shown uh, you know uh, more like natural environments and stuff like that. But uh, I will make a separate video on him at at some point. Um, so, you know, this is something that you see uh, in a lot of pagan traditions where a statue or representation of a deity is like shown different places rather than the temple in which they normally sit or, uh, you know, their specific area in which their, uh, their, their, their idols would reside, I suppose. Um, but this, uh, this uh, was carted around in, uh, in, in like this wooden cart, I believe, and um, there were slaves who uh, would, you know, basically be sacrificed in water. Uh, they were drowned uh, as human sacrifices. And um, that is interesting to me because Njord is, of course, a deity of the upper seas or of the high seas, if you will. Uh, because uh, Njord is actually not the only sea, sea deity in uh, in the Germanic pantheon. Uh, we, have, of course, have Eger, uh, who is the uh, god of the deep seas. And then you have Ron, who is the uh, goddess of uh, drowned victims and stuff like that. So um, Njord does not... Uh, is not alone in his, uh, you know, authority over the sea, but Njord is the aspect of that um, uh, aquatic energy that we as human beings have most closely associated with throughout history, because he is protector of ships, of sailors, uh, you know, he presided over wealth uh, through, uh, through sea, uh, sea trade, naval trade, uh, through fishing and all those other kinds of things. So that is um, part of his domain, I suppose, and part of the uh, things that you can call on him for. Now, um, as I said, he is a Vanir, which means that he is a fertility god, much like Frey and Freya. They are both Vanir as well. Now, it was said that during the end of the Aesir Vanir War, because the two factions of our gods used to be uh, in conflict with one another, uh, where the uh, Vanir were a very magical-based people who uh, presided mostly over fertility and bounty of the land and uh, about sex and stuff like that. Uh, whereas the Aesir were more about law, order, warfare, and things like that. So eventually, um, the two sides decided that they wanted to end the fighting. And it was negotiated, uh, I believe, with the help of Njord. Uh, that uh, which is where his diplomatic qualities are coming forth, which we will be discussing later on as well. Uh, but with the help of Njord, uh, he bargained basically with the Acer that uh, he and his two kids would uh, live as hostages or honorary Acer. Uh, eventually, he became an honorary Acer. Um, that they would live as hostages among the Acer, and that some of the Acer would be traded to the Vanir as. Um, well, hostages, basically, uh, to facilitate a truce or peace, if you will, uh, among the two tribes. 
So that is how uh, Njord and Frey and Freya uh, came to be uh, residing among the Aesir instead of among their own people. Now, it was also said that um, Njord was married to Skadi, uh, the goddess of the hunt, uh, goddess of, um, let's see, winter, I believe she is a goddess of as well, of, uh, of ice she has a connection to, and uh, hail storms and stuff like that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because I have worked with her during my initiations into Hagalaz and Isa, so she has a very strong uh, connection and elements to the cold and to winter in, in, in its uh, variety of uh, expressions and, you know, of cold and stuff like that. So uh, this meant marriage, unfortunately, uh, for both of them ended in failure, or perhaps fortunately, because, you know, if stuff doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Uh, but um, basically, apparently the reason for this was that uh, Scotty preferred to, you know, live in cold mountainous areas and Njord uh, preferred to, being a sea god, you know, reside uh, with, uh, with the sea in it or near it at least. And they basically split their schedules into uh, half of the year they would live with Njord and then half of the year they would live with Scotty and neither of them liked the others about. So this became such a great point of frustration for them that they eventually went their separate ways. Um, so yeah, that is a bit of uh, background on uh, on Njord here, because uh, this is uh, of course a video on Njord, not specifically on Scotty with all due respect to her. Um, but while Njord's popularity has certainly waned over the past centuries with the spread of Christianity, unfortunately, of course, um, throughout Europe, uh, he is still absolutely a force to be reckoned with, because the sea is not quite tameable, as we know. I mean, it is obviously, as I have seen in my own native country, uh, maintainable, it is manageable, but you cannot ever truly tame the sea. So, um, however, with that said, despite its violent aspects, because the sea is at times, of course, very violent, uh, I have found in my personal workings uh, with Njord uh, to be, uh, I, I found him to be a very uh, caring, generous deity so far in my interactions with him. Um, he is, of course, also said to be a deity of fatherhood and of uh, empathy and nurturing in that sense. So um, that is an aspect that I have uh, felt from him. He's very easygoing, like, you know, he, like you mess up a slight thing in your ritual, for example, and he's just like, you know, uh, it's fine, don't worry about it, we're cool. Um, you know, and, and that is... Um, some something that is quite uh, quite quite pleasant uh, to to interact with someone who's quite pleasant to interact with uh, i have found so far uh, like i said he's a very generous deity which means that he is someone you can call on in case of wealth in case of uh, uh, you know prosperity fertility and stuff like that but we like i said we'll get on that in a little bit um, he is a um, deity who can grant wealth through trade, because historically, again, uh, water was used as a means of trading, of course, uh, which is where the, uh, you know, the whole, the whole uh, image of the Vikings comes from. Uh, not just from loot and plunder, mind you, because the majority of Scandinavians in that uh, era would probably have been traders, not so much raiders. But uh, certainly that is also a uh, matter to bring wealth about, of course, by looting a foreign monastery over in England. Uh, and hey, uh, all right. So it, it brings wealth uh, in, in whatever way you look at it uh, back in those days, I suppose. So uh, Newark brings wealth uh, through water historically, but in modern day that translates, of course, to um, business. Uh, perhaps he can help you bring uh, foreign business in from overseas, perhaps. So if you run an international company or if you or if you run a company that is on the national level and you wish to expand it internationally, uh, Newark can be called on to assist you in bringing in foreigners into your business. Uh, Newark can, in general, uh, fertilize your business because, again, he's a fertility god. He can bring wealth uh, in into businesses in trades, period, in uh, whatever you do. If you set up a business, you call on Yord and you bargain with him and you negotiate a suitable agreement with him, then you can uh, uh, garner wealth and riches through him. Um, and we are specifically talking about riches and wealth here because Njord is a uh, generous deity, as we have said. 
And um, I have, for example, spoken to Frey or Ingvi Frey uh, on the matter of wealth. Now he is the lord of the bounty, the lord of the land, which means that if you call on Frey for uh, wealth, for example, you will more get things in terms of um, sustenance, of food, making sure that you are able to provide for yourself and for your family and stuff like that. So if you are someone who is actively engaged in a business and you wish to work with a Germanic deity on this, uh, Njord is basically your go-to guy. So, um, he can actually also, is, uh, he is often set to grant land. Uh, now, what that translates to in modern times, because back in the day it would, of course, have been, you know, uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know, uh, becoming lord or, or chieftain or whatever of a certain... Uh, of, of a certain piece of land, maybe through conquest or through other means, through, uh, through settling somewhere. Um, but these days, I very strongly have uh, gotten the information that it is about uh, being able to sell your house for a profitable uh, amount of profitable amount of wealth. Um, you can buy uh, a suitable house for your for your family um, for a very favorable price. Uh, if you are looking at uh, buying a piece of land to build your own house or you know, business even perhaps on, then Njord can certainly assist you with this. Uh, if you wish to immigrate, um, Njord can assist with this because that is in essence also a symbolic interpretation of gaining land. So um, he can assist even with matters of fertility. Uh, we are speaking uh, both literal and uh, symbolic uh, fertility here. So to provide you an example of uh, how specifically uh, Njord can bring about uh, certain things for you, um, say that you are a fisherman, for example. Uh, Njord can help you uh, increase your business, uh, Njord can help you uh, find perhaps favorable uh, spots of fishing or to uh, gain the rights to specific uh, fishing spots, stuff like that. Uh, if you are, like I said, a trader or a business person, then Njord can uh, draw customers to you, he can uh, draw international customers perhaps to you, he can help you expand overseas if your business is big enough, ambitious enough, uh, stuff like that. Um, you know, uh, he can help you have your business take off if you are just uh, starting out by helping you build a favorable reputation, by helping you uh, with, like I said, uh, drawing in customers, for example, which is very important, uh, building a customer base, of course. Um, he can help protect your business uh, against, you know, uh, outside occurrences, against outside influences that may wish to uh, unfavorably influence your business. Um, he can help you turn a profit through various different avenues. Um, he is an excellent deity to invoke, like I said, for uh, gaining land. Uh, if you wish to uh, safely move, I forgot to include that in the list earlier. Uh, if you wish to have a safe uh, move, if you want to have a move go smoothly, if you move from one place to the other, uh, especially, I suppose, if you move uh, across continents or uh, over continents to different continents, uh, then Njord is someone that you would want to call on to uh, help assist and facilitate this move and make it go as smoothly as possible. He is, like I said, a, a Vanir, which means that he is a fertility god, and that means that he can assist with, uh, you know, matters of uh, childbirth, he can assist with matters of, uh, you know, making sure that your, um, that your childbirth is less likely to be influenced by negative factors in various ways. Uh, he is therefore also, because he is a fertility god, uh, a very suitable deity to call on if you work, for example, in agriculture, which has to do with growing things, of course. Now, Frey also, as mentioned earlier, can cover this as well. Or you can perhaps, you know, talk to both of them and uh, come to a mutual agreement with both of these, be with the, both of these beings. Uh, if you work in a medical profession that has to do with childbirth, with uh, delivering children, uh, with uh, fertility in some way, shape or form, uh, Njord can certainly also assist you, both in the... Uh, employment aspects, of course, like uh, helping you get ahead in that sense, but he can also, of course, uh, provide you perhaps valuable insight on how to best execute your profession and uh, things like that. So all these things are very intertwined if you start looking at it like that, and uh, perhaps some of you who are uh, practicing magic, who are interested or perhaps even already working in these areas that I have listed, Njord can be a great help to, uh, to, to those of you who are in these fields. Um, Njord is also an excellent uh, negotiator and guide, as briefly mentioned earlier, uh, seen in the myths of the Aesir and Vanir war, where he uh, 
basically agreed to be exchanged as hostages to you know settle peace. So he's a good diplomat, he's a good uh, peacekeeper, uh, a good negotiator. Uh, he can therefore also be employed by people who deal in that kind of thing. Um, I'm thinking from the top of my head, like a, a realtor, for example, you are um, helping people gain land or sell land, uh, which is another thing that North presides over, but you are also helping them find the best deal possible. Uh, you are profiting off of that, of course. So if you are a realtor or a real estate agent or something like that, uh, or if you're thinking of uh, going into those fields, then Nord can be a very uh, suitable deity. In fact, would be a very suitable deity to, uh, to get in involved with to this end. Uh, Njord is also a father figure, uh, as mentioned, he's the father of Frey and Freya, and um, both in mythology and from my personal experience, uh, he is uh, someone who can, you know, greatly assist those either uh, missing a father figure in their lives or those who are uh, planning on, about to become, or even already are fathers or father figures. Now, I'm Personally, not yet a father, but, uh, you know, um, I will definitely be working with him uh, should that ever, you know, come about. So, um, Njord can be a great god to call on uh, for those who are in leadership positions as well. Uh, he has a, a lot of empathy, like I said, uh, sympathy. He can provide a lot of guidance. Uh, he inspires uh, people uh, to have uh, greater leadership capabilities. Because a good leader is, of course, not just someone who barks orders. A good leader is also someone who can be engaged with the people under them. And a good leader is also someone who can have empathy, uh, but who can also balance these two of, uh, you know, having to be cold and logical sometimes and also having to be empathetic. And you need to, of course, balance these things out and know when to be what. So Njord can very, uh, very greatly assist those in leadership positions. For example, if you are, uh, you know, in a leadership position uh, in, in the military, for example, if you directly lead people, uh, if you are running a business with uh, employees working for you, stuff like that. So uh, that is something that perhaps you may wish to consider if you, uh, you know, are in, uh, in, in roles like that, in positions like that, in positions of authority where it is imperative that you uh, connect with your, uh, you know, subordinates if you, if you, uh, are responsible for their safety, for their well-being, both physically and mentally, then, uh, and in some cases spiritually. Um, so, you know, that, that is something that you may also uh, want to look into. Um, so these are the things that, uh, or some of the things that uh, Njord can do for you, uh, which Njord can help you with. Now, of course, then the question remains, what can you do for Njord? Because I'm assuming that if you are watching this, if you are wanting to work with a particular deity, um, then you will also want to be able to provide suitable offerings in return. So uh, Njord appreciates industriousness, and this is of course not a trait exclusive to Njord. Uh, this is something that you see a lot in Germanic deities. Uh, they, they always appreciate uh, self-reliance. They always encourage it. They always encourage standing up for yourself, protecting yourself, protecting your kin, which is a very valuable trait in my personal opinion to have. And um, this is in and of itself uh, considered a sacrifice, uh, not just to Njord, but also to the gods in general. Um, so creating things, working hard to get your business off the ground, uh, being a fair and empathetic, but of course firm leader, uh, are all things that Njord appreciates due to the qualities that I have already mentioned that he possesses. Um, being a good father, being a good father-like figure, if you are not actually a father, but if you are in, like I said, positions of authority or something like that, um, you know, these are all things that are hard work, uh, these are all things that Njord appreciates. Um, should you enter into a contract or other form of commitment or agreement with Njord, uh, energy donations uh, on a monthly basis or on a regular interval or even just a bulk energy donation in whatever form, uh, that is always uh, appreciated, of course. These are all things that you can uh, sacrifice. Um, so basically, um, you can have some of your um, spiritual helpers, assistants, uh, assist with, you know, having energy extracted from you at regular intervals to donate to New York's, uh, you know, to New York's cause, if, if you will. Um, you can have him arrange that for you. Uh, you can even meditate regularly for a certain amount of time to donate energy to New York, send it off to him, if you will. Um, so he has obviously got a connection to the sea, 
so Njord also appreciates those who fight for the welfare of the sea, for the health of our oceans, uh, for the wealth and well-being of our lakes, of our rivers, of our uh, you know of our streams, and all things related to water. So those who take measure against pollution, against uh, you know uh, the tampering with our oceans and overfishing and stuff like that, uh, these these are all uh, things that Njord appreciates naturally because he is a deity of the upper high seas. Um, working with water or sea magic uh, for healing, for protection, uh, for, for guidance, for nurturing, stuff like that, uh, which Nord, Njord, by the way, um, can also help teach, uh, is another way to honor Njord. Uh, so if you are feeling called to uh, you know, uh, work with water magic, if you are called to working with the energy of the sea, uh, these are things that honor Njord as well. Um, like I said, Njord is a generous deity, uh, sharing your wealth and bounty with others, uh, whether that is just, you know, uh, your food or buying your, your, your friend's dinner on occasion or, you know, taking them out to uh, just to see a mo movie or, um, you know, helping friends or family out with debts or stuff like that. If it is within your capabilities, of course, because there's also a need to look after yourself as always. Uh, but if these things are all uh, possible for you to do, like if you are, for example, rich, but you're, uh, you know, you got money to spare, uh, if you help out others uh, through such a means, then uh, Njord also greatly appreciates that because Njord is a wealthy deity, and Njord is also very generous with his wealth. Therefore, uh, yeah, it is uh, something that he appreciates if you share your wealth with other people. Um, you could even alternatively uh, make donations to charities, uh, you know, these, these are also uh, a way of sharing your wealth, of sharing your affluence, of uh, making the world a better place. Uh, Njord will also always, of course, appreciate uh, tasks done for him by the magician or shaman in question uh, through spells, uh, the utilization of spirits under the magician's command, uh, stuff like that. So, for example, um, I have been asked to cast protection spells on random people that I did not know uh, by Njord uh, to uh, perform like uh, area cleansings and stuff like that. And these are all, you know, things that you can expect if, if, if you uh, uh, offer Njord uh, service in some way, shape or form. So, um, suppose that you wish to approach Njord with an offering out of your gratitude, or if you wish to approach him with a, uh, like a ceremonial magic kind of contract kind of deal, um, what would you offer Njord? Um, I would offer Njord uh, meat. I mean, I, I don't know of a single Germanic deity who dislikes meat. Uh, so other alcoholic beverages like uh, beer is most likely uh, going to be uh, a good offering. I offered Njord beer at, uh, at one point and he seemed to be perfectly okay with that because I did not have the money to buy uh, a pretty expensive bottle of meat at that point. So uh, beer was a suitable offering. Uh, I did not uh, feel any sort of disapproval uh, from that. Um, so that is a, that is a, a possibility. Um, now, of course, uh, wine would be a possibility. I however have not, I know meat is technically wine, it's honey wine, of course, but outside of meat, uh, I don't have that much experience with offering him wine. So if you do do that, you may want to perhaps consult with him on what he likes, or you may want to, um, you know, just be safe and buy him a beer, I suppose. Uh, but if you do want to buy him some wine, just ask him what kind of wine he likes, and he will probably give you an answer in some way, shape, or form, and uh, buy that for him. Um, so, you know, should he somehow not approve of whatever you spontaneously bring him, uh, I'm sure he'll let you know, but like I said, he's a kind-hearted deity, he's a sympathetic individual uh, in my experience, so he will just gently let you know, this is not what I want, this is not what I like, uh, thank you for the offering, I appreciate it, but next time please bring me this or that instead because I don't really care for this. So no worries even if you bring him a quote unquote faulty offering, that, that's not the end of the world, there's no need to grovel, uh, by the way you should never ever grovel before Germanic deities, uh, they, they frown upon it, so don't do that. Um, just say, alright, perfect, thank you for letting me know, and continue about your business. Um, so, Njord, in my experience, uh, despite being a water deity, uh, does enjoy offerings of candles, uh, particularly in uh, colors that represent sea or wealth or abundance. Uh, we're thinking light blue, dark blue, uh, green, uh, yellow, because yellow, gold, is happiness, stuff like that as well. Um, 
so these all come to mind, these colors representing water, abundance, finances, fertility. Um, so I suppose that since fertility is also related to sex, uh, that perhaps red might be a suitable offering. Um, so Nyord, in my experience, appreciates offerings of uh, pure sea salt, uh, which you should be able to buy in various places, such as on perhaps Amazon or in your local metaphysical store. Uh, he appreciates various herbs related to water, wealth, or uh, you know abundance, good luck, um, fertility, um, also that are stereotypically associated with water. Uh, just look up online all the various uh, kind of herbs that you can come across in those specific uh in those specific you know um, meanings so if you offer Nyord uh, incense i would uh, go with something water related uh, such as moon incense or moon themed incense uh, water themed incense uh, incense that is related to fertility or sex or uh perhaps um you know, uh, rose incense, lavender incense, stuff like that. Uh, perhaps incense related to money, to wealth, to affluence, to abundance. Uh, so you, you can see the theme here. Uh, he's a Vanir, fertility, wealth, abundance. Um, he's a water deity, therefore things that are associated with water, which includes the moon because lunar energies are, uh, you know, of course said to be responsible for the regulation of tides, etc. So these are uh, the basic gist of what I can give you uh, for what you should be offering or uh, thinking in the direction of offering uh, to New York uh, if you want to make a uh, offering to him or approach him for a agreement of some sort. So how to interact with Njord? Uh, like I said, I would just act casually, I would just act friendly, even if you've never met him, uh, be straightforward. Uh, I hadn't really talked all that much to Njord. Um, I don't think I ever really talked to Njord uh, when I first approached him for a for a contract. However, um, there was some things that I really desperately needed. So I talked to him and I was like, listen, I know we haven't talked before. Uh, I know you appreciate straightforwardness. Uh, I will be honest with you. This is what I need from you. Um, this is what I will give to you in return. Uh, I will work with you. I will do tasks for you. I will have my spirits do tasks for you. Uh, I will make you a sacrifice of this. I will make you a sacrifice of that. Uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and I will do this for you and that for you. And I will go here for you. And he's like, all right, perfect. You are paying uh, very, you know, uh, more than, more than fair payment for what you are asking. Uh, which I know that Njord appreciates uh, because he himself is a generous deity. So if you are generous to him, he will absolutely reciprocate that. And um, yeah, so that is something that you uh, should absolutely uh, you know keep in mind. Be, be generous, be open, be honest, be straightforward, uh, be sympathetic, uh, be empathetic, but also be you know sh show that you are willing to take charge of the situation and uh, show that you are willing to. Uh, you know, uh, help yourself by helping others and that you are also willing to help others by helping yourself. So, um, I don't really know if there is a necessity to approaching Njord now. Um, when I did approach Njord, it was at night. Um, I think the moon was, I believe, waxing at the time. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I can't quite uh, remember when I first approached him what the state of the moon was. Um, it was at night. I live in the desert, uh, so I wasn't near water. Uh, the moon wasn't like completely full at the very least. Um, so all these things do not actually matter because I was able to communicate with him just fine. However, if you want the very ideal situation, you probably would approach him by a body of water, probably uh, at night with the full moon with your offerings. Um, if that, if I had to give you an ideal uh, way to approach Njord, then that would be it. However, like I said, I live in a desert. Uh, I don't really have that much access to bodies of water uh, near where I live, and uh, you know, so it. it it gets a little impractical, uh, but in general, I don't really think that think that it is as uh, you know as as convoluted as having to specifically approach him on specific times and dates and lunar cycles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At least not in my experience, but I'm a, I'm a pretty free form practitioner in how I do things. So, you know, um, it, it, I suppose it depends more on how you personally as a practitioner feel than uh, compared to how Nior feels, because I don't really. 
I, I didn't really get the sense that he was like dismayed that I call him like not on a full moon by a body of water or something. So um, it, it, it really is up to you. Um, yeah, so that is a basic uh, guide to, uh, to New York, I suppose. Um, this is also my first video, as mentioned, in this series. Uh, expect many more to follow. Uh, like I said, if you have any suggestions, if you have any uh, requests on specific deities that you want to discuss, um, I will, for various reasons, uh, choose to, um, you know, not engage with certain requests. If I, for example, don't like the deity in question, if I have bad experiences with them, um, you know, stuff like that. But for the vast, vast majority of deities, um, I will likely be open to making a video about them. So, um, Please let me uh, please let me know um, if you have an interest in specific deities. Uh, I will do my best to uh, honor the requests that I get the most. Um, of course, um, I also have a limited amount of time and other obligations that I use this channel for. So uh, it is a matter of first come, first serve, and also of um, priorities, I suppose. And again, um, you know, um, if you suggest make a video on Yahweh, uh, I will make a video on Yahweh, sure, why not? But um, you already, if you look at my channel, know my stance on that particular deity. So, uh, you know, if, if, if that's the kind of thing you're going to be asking me, um, sure, okay, but I am going to give you my honest opinion on, on the deity in general. So, um, you know, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, do, do whatever uh, whatever you feel like, I suppose. Um, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, as they say. So, thank you for watching, uh, and I will see you in a next video, whatever that is. Um, it should be uh, soon that I am going to be uploading Lagos, uh, because I am pretty confident that really I am at the tail end of my initiation into it. Um, yeah, it, it's been a very rough, rough, rough initiation, uh, very long, very lengthy, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of tired of Lagos, let, let me put it like that, and that's usually when I know that uh, an initiation is drawing to a close, because at that point, I'm usually, uh, I've, I've worked through the energies, I, I feel I understand them, and like I said, uh, I've, I've worked with this, this water deity with New York now, and uh, you know there will be more working with him to come to understand certain aspects aspects of his uh, his domain his influence his uh, his affluence as well i suppose and uh, yeah i look forward to uh, making the uh, video on lacus as a conclusion to uh, you know that specific rune and to finally move on to ingwas because that's a rune i am actually pretty damn excited for because it is a rune of self actualization so um, you know because anyway we will get on that in that specific uh, in that specific uh, video Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time. Hell.